All right, this video is on the um, half angle identities. All right, so suppose we have the cosine of 2x. We know that that's uh, equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x from our double angle identities. So let's take this formula and let's solve for sine. Okay, so then that would mean that 2 sine squared x equals um, 1 minus cosine of 2x. Okay, then that means then that sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine of 2x, all divided by 2, which then means that the sine of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine 2x, all over 2. Everybody cool? Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to replace this x here. Okay, let's let x equal some angle divided by 2. So we're going to plug in a over 2. All right, when we do that, we have the sine of a over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus, when you plug in a over 2 for x here, you get the cosine of 2 times a over 2, which is just the cosine of a and then all over 2. And this is what's called a half angle identity. Because we're taking the sine of half of a particular angle, a over 2. Whatever a is, we're cutting that in half and we're taking the sine of that value. Well, this is how we, um, we can evaluate it. <clears throat> Notice that there's that plus or minus thing there. Well, that plus or minus um, is chosen depending on what quadrant a over 2 is in. Right, so if quadrant, if a over two, your angle a over two is in quadrant um, three, then this value over here on the right is going to be negative because sine of of an angle that's in quadrant three is negative. Okay, follow me. Right, we'll see. We'll see an example here in just a few minutes. All right, so this is one half angle formula. Let's derive the second one. Again, cosine two x is equal to two cosine squared x minus one. Remember that was the other identity that cosine two x could be equal to. So this time we're going to isolate cosine. So we have cosine squared x equals one plus cosine two x. <clears throat> so then cosine squared x equals one plus cosine two x all over two. And so therefore the cosine of x equals, again, we take the square root of both sides and you get 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. And again, we're going to go off to the side here and let x equal some angle divided by 2. And so therefore we have the cosine of a over 2, there's your half angle thing, equals plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine a all divided by 2. And this would be the half angle formula for cosine. Okay. Again, plus or minus is chosen depending on what quadrant a over 2 is located. Right? Now, we're not going to derive the tangent ones, but there are three of them. Right? And you can go derive them on your own, but just due to time, I'm not going to take the time here to derive them. All right? But tangent of a over 2 could be equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine a over 1 plus cosine a. Again, the plus or minus is chosen depending on what quadrant a over 2 is in. But tangent of a over 2 also could be written as just the sine of a over 1 plus cosine a. And the, the sine, the, if it's positive or negative, would just fall out naturally. And the same idea with this third one down here where it could be written as 1 minus cosine a over sine a. Now again, these may look weird, so I'm going to encourage you to go derive them on your own or, or talk to your instructor if you want to see the derivations of where they come from. All right? Okay, so let's get on to an example. All right, find the exact value for the sine of 9 pi over 8. Well, what's the first thing we want to make note of? Well, 9 pi over 8 is in what quadrant? That's right, it's in quadrant 3. We have to know where that angle is going to be, right? So now we'll come over here and we'll say, all right, the sine of 9 pi over 8 is the same thing as the sine. Well, can we rewrite 9 pi over 8 as some angle divided by 2? That's what this is saying. We want some angle divided by 2. All right. So we say, all right, 9 pi over 8. Well, that could be written as 9 pi over 4 divided by 2. Everybody see that? 
Okay, well, now we have the so-called A value, and so we can plug it into our little identity, and that's going to equal um, square root of 1 minus the cosine of 9 pi over 4, right, your angle A there, all divided by 2. Now, out in front here, is it going to be a plus, or is it going to be a negative sign? Well, what quadrant was 9 pi over 8 located in? Right, it's in quadrant 3. So sine of an angle that's in quadrant 3 is always negative. Right? So we put a negative sign out in front. And then that goes to negative the square root. Cosine of 9 pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. All over 2. And that finally goes down to 2 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. That's the exact value. I mean, I agree, it looks kind of ugly, but that's the exact value for the side of 9 pi over 8. What did we do to go from this line here to this line here? We multiplied top and bottom of this big fraction by 2. Right, straight across, to get you over here. Okay? Alright, let's do one more. Alright, find the cosine of x over 2 if we know that the sine of x is negative 4 fifths, and we know that x is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. So that puts x in quadrant 4. We'll get to that in just a minute. First off, let's make note of what cosine of x over 2 is. Cosine of x over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine x all divided by 2. So in order to figure this value out, remember, that, that's, remember this is just the identity, in order to figure this out we need to know what cosine of x is and we need, need to know what quadrant x over 2 is located in. Okay, so we need to find both those pieces of information. So let's come over here. Let's figure out what uh, what cosine of x is first, because we know what the sine of x is, right? So if x is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, this implies that x is in quadrant 4, okay? So draw your little triangle. There's x. Sine of x is, is 4 fifths, so we have 4, 5. And therefore, by the Pythagorean theorem, that makes this side down here be 3, right? Therefore, the cosine of x is equal to 3 fifths. But is it positive or negative? Well, since, since x is in quadrant 4, then cosine of x is positive. So positive 3 fifths. Okay, so now we know what to plug in for this thing. So now the question becomes, well, is, it, is cosine of x over 2 going to be a positive value or a negative value? Well, what quadrant is the angle x over 2 located? Well, if x is located between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, Let's come down here real quick. Then that means if we divide all three of these sides here by positive 2, we would have 3 pi over 4 is less than x over 2 is less than pi. That means then that x over 2 is in what quadrant? That's right, it's in quadrant 2, right? 3 pi over 4 and pi located in quadrant 2 there. Okay. So that means then that uh, we're going to use which one of these, the positive or the negative version? Well, since we're since x over 2 is in quadrant 2, the cosine of any angle that's in quadrant 2 is going to be negative. So the cosine of x over 2 equals negative the square root of 1 plus cosine of x. Cosine of x was 3 fifths divided by which goes down to the square root of 8 tenths, which, right, so square to the top, square to the bottom, square root of 8 goes to 2 radical 2, and then when you rationalize the denominator, you'll get negative 2 square root of 5, all over 5, when you rationalize and reduce. So this would be the exact value for the cosine of x over 2 if the sine of x is negative 4 fifths and your angle x is in quadrant 4. I'm leaving some steps here, some gaps here for you to fill in. All right, so that's kind of the idea on how to use the half-angle identities. All right, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.